All right, so I'm gonna go over a fast start with you guys today. And as you're sitting down doing a fast start with somebody, you have a, a couple goals. Number one, your goal is to make sure that they understand why they need to get you on kitchen table appointments as soon as possible. Number two, your goal is to set a couple of kitchen table appointments before you leave the house. So that is the number one goal. Before you leave the house, you leave with kitchen table appointments set. And number three, you let them know exactly what it's gonna look like the next 30 or 60 days so they know what to expect and they're excited about moving forward. So as you do a fast start with somebody, you wanna make sure you have the fast start manual and you go through it with them. You wanna master it, okay? So. As we get you off to a fast start, just first of all, I want you to understand the weekly meeting agenda. You know, we talked about before committing to show up to uh, Thursday nights, and obviously we have the overviews from 7 to 10.30 p.m., just that one night a week. The only other thing we do is we do a conference call Sunday night uh, from 9 o'clock to 10 p.m., and uh, here's the number. You just dial in the PIN number, and you'll just listen, okay? It'll also be text out. So there are a few keys to success in this business that I like to let everybody know up front. Number one is never missing a meeting. Now this is so important because the meetings in our business are like practice and you think, would LeBron James be the player he is today if he never showed up to practice? No, he wouldn't. He has to show up to practice. In fact, he shows up to practice. He's the first one there, the last one gone. That's what makes him the best, right? So it's so important to never miss a meeting. Number two is you want to bring people. That's the uh, fastest way to grow your business. And number three is you want to get promoted. If you're going to go on an appointment and help a family, you want to make as much money per family as possible, right? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to talk to you guys about building a company within a company. Now, anytime you're going to build a business, there's three things you have to have to be successful, all right? Number one is you have to have a market. You have to have people that would like your product or service. Number two is you have to have a marketing plan. You have to have a way to get your product or service into the hands of people that would like your product or service. See, some of the best products or services in this world we'll never know about because they didn't have an effective marketing plan. And then number three is you have to have a system where the brand newest person can do as good of a job as you or better so that you don't have to be there forever, right? So we're going to talk about those three things and how we do that, right? So number one is our market. You look at our market, you know, they say the average credit card debt amongst households is almost $16,000. They say U.S. foreclosure actions have shattered all records and will do so again this year. You know, 95 million adults have no life insurance coverage. 43% of our country has less than $10,000 saved. 46% uh, of our country says they won't have enough money to live comfortably through retirement. 77% uh, of our country lives paycheck to paycheck, and the worst one of all, in my opinion, is the typical American household made less money last year than a typical household made a full decade ago. So you think about this. If you sit down with 10 families, how many out of 10 have an issue in at least one of these areas? Like almost all 10, right? And so that means we have a huge, huge market, which gives us a phenomenal opportunity. Now. These are some of the things that are said. Now, we're not financial advisors or financial planners, but we are in that same industry, so it lets you know the potential of what we're doing. Now, CNNMoney.com said careers of the future were financial advisor. Why? As company pensions die out, Americans increasingly have to manage their own retirement savings. And then FastCompany.com said what are the best jobs to pursue over the next five years? Number one was personal financial advisor, and it also said that a personal financial advisor could earn millions. And then sixwise.com said the 10 most satisfying jobs. See, I believe everybody in our generation wants to be satisfied with what they're doing. They want something they can believe in, something they can love, and something they can be an exci excited about doing. It says 10 most satisfying jobs based on job growth, salary growth potential, and freedom to be innovative and creative. Number one is personal financial advisor. And then careerbuilder.com said that as a potential career, the financial advisory business looks alluring. It said the broker ranks are projected to increase 30% through 2018. Now, what other industry is projected to grow by 30% a year right now? No other industry, right? So that's a huge opportunity that we have our hands on right now. Now, you look at our marketing plan. So we have this incredible 
Uh, we have an incredible uh, market, which has given us a huge opportunity. Now we have to have a marketing plan to effectively take advantage of that market, right? Now, how do most companies get their clients? They do advertising. Now, most companies spend tens of thousands or millions of dollars on advertising to sell their product or service, right? They'll pay millions of dollars for billboards or millions of dollars for commercials or whatever it may be. Now, how many times in your life have you ever drove down the freeway, saw a billboard, or called the number on the billboard? Probably not very often, which means that form of advertising is not very effective, right? But what is effective, the best form of advertising is word of mouth. Now, the marketing plan of Primerica is a new associate's natural market with two objectives in mind. Number one is to help the new associate build a business with Primerica so you start part-time and then when the timing's right you can make a career change. And number two is to educate the consumer of our products and our concepts through a complimentary financial needs analysis so we can help them set up a game plan to become properly protected, debt-free, and financially independent. Okay, So here's what's going to happen. We're going to create a top 100 list. And as we create this top 100 list, we're going to scrub it down to a 25 training list. Now, out of this top 25 training list, we're going to scrub that down to the top 10. Now, why is the top 10 so important? Let's say that out of those top 10, one of those top 10 is your uncle. Now, let me ask you, if you called up your uncle today and said, I want to manage your finances, is your uncle going to say, come on over? Probably not. In fact, he's probably going to say, yeah, right, no way. I know everything you don't know about everything you don't know. In fact, you borrowed $20 from me last week. He's going to never let you manage his finances, right? Because he knows every mistake you've made in life. But will he let you come over to his house tonight? Yeah, no problem. In fact, he's your uncle. You can come over anytime. Now, if you take me, he knows what I'm talking about. So we can get him as a client. Now, we never could have got him as a client without me, and we never could have got, got him uh, as a client without you. So together, it's a win-win situation. That's why it's so important we go see these top 10 together. That way, we learn the business, you get clients, and it gives you the opportunity to get a bunch of results. So now we go see these top 10 people. Six of them will become clients, and three Three of them are going to join you in business. Now, I don't know which three people it's going to be. I just know three people are going to say, I want to do this. Now, what do these three people need to do? The same thing you just did. So now these three people create a top 25 list and we scrub that down to the top 10. So now we have 30 people to go see. Now that turns into 18 clients and nine recruits. So think about this for a minute. If you've seen 40 appointments, you've seen 24 clients being helped, and you've seen the hiring process happen 12 times, are you going to know what you're doing? Yeah, you're going to be pretty good at it, right? So now guess who trains these nine people? Well, you do. So you train these nine people. Now that gives you 90 people to go see. That turns into 54 clients, 27 recruits. That turns into 270 people to go see, 162 clients, 81 recruits. That doesn't include all the people we never went and saw on your original list, right? Now, the reality is this probably isn't going to happen perfectly just like this because the licensing slows it down a little bit, but the potential is there that if you are willing to do the work, you could make it happen. All right? But if we don't do a good job on your top 25 list, then this part isn't going to happen. As long as we do a good job on your top 25 list, you'll have the potential to go make this happen. Okay? So. That's our marketing plan. Now, um, as you're getting off to a fast start, I want you to understand in order to have the most success in your business, or any business for that matter, you must surround yourself with good people, right? Think about this. If you're going to open up a restaurant, you're going to need to hire a good cook, good hostess, great waiters, and wait waitresses. Without them, your restaurant will not succeed. So, I'm going to think about some. If you were going to go open up a restaurant tomorrow and you needed funding, so you put together this business plan and you go down to the bank and you tell the bank that you want to uh, open up a, a restaurant and you tell that guy that you're never going to hire anybody. Do you think you're going to get the funding to open up the restaurant? Why? No, because you cannot, you can't wait the people, be the host, be the cook. You can't do all of those things and have a successful restaurant, right? So you have to hire and train other people to do those things that you can have a successful business. So the same thing, if you're going to start a basketball team and win games, you must recruit great players to win championships, right? You got to have a great forward, a great center, a great guard. And if you want to continue to win games, you must continue to add great players to your team. All right. So the difference between a business succeeds and a business that fails is the team that surrounds them. 
See, understand that Bill Gates has had and continues to have success because of the team that surrounds him. See, Bill Gates has made more money in the last 13 years since he's been retired than he did in the prior 20 years of running his business. Why? Because he did a great job of hiring people that ran his company better than he did, right? So your number one goal should be to surround yourself with great people fast. All right. Now, I want you to know that we're very excited that you decided to get involved with us, all right? And I also want you to know that if you follow our system, every goal and dream you have can and will be accomplished, okay? So within about 60 days from now, what's going to happen is we're going to get you licensed and trained along with one, two, maybe even three or more licensed trained people along with you, as well as several others on track to do the same. Now you're gonna have an unlimited number of appointments to go on because of all the new recruits coming onto your team that also need to be field trained. And it's also gonna put you in position to earn two to 5,000 a month in income right out of the gate. Now why the gap? Based on how much you're willing to work, okay? It's also gonna put you in position to be an RVP within about six months or so. However, you probably won't wanna go RVP for 12 to 18 months so you're mature enough in the business to be one and run your own office. But you're going to make thirty to fifty thousand in income your first twelve months in the business, and one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand your second year in the business. So let me ask you: on a scale of one to ten, ten being the highest, what's your desire to make all this happen? Probably a ten, right? So what a ten means to me, as long as it's moral, ethical, and legal, you're willing to do whatever it takes. Is that what a ten means to you? Yeah. Okay, great. Then all you need to do while getting licensed is get me in front of 15 people that are in the right market across the kitchen table in the next 30 days. So I'm guessing that's something you can do, no problem then, right? Yeah? Okay, great. So let me ask you, how many days or nights a week can you give to Primerica right now? Let's say, let's say four, right? Let's say, okay, great. Now, as we're completing your training list, I want you to understand that every business has an inventory, okay? And these names are your inventory. So think about this. If you were going to open up a shoe store and you only had two pairs of shoes, would you make any money? Probably not. Not because you were in the wrong business, but because you didn't have enough inventory. Why? Because Nike has made billions. So they've proved that the shoe business can make a lot of money. The problem is you just didn't have enough shoes, right? So in our business, we're in the service business, so we can't keep a warehouse full of mutual funds. It's a service business, so we, our inventory is names and numbers of clients to serve, right? So our goal is to grow the amount of names you have available for you to call, okay? So just think, if you got 10 referrals from 100 people, you now have 1,000 names to call. So at that point, if you have 1,000 names to call, you have as much uh, work as you want to do at that point, right? So to understand the more names you have to start with, the better. Without these names, it'd be like having a McDonald's without French fries or a Starbucks without coffee. It would never work. So the more names you have to start with your, on your top 100 list, the more success you're going to have most likely. So remember, I don't want you to pre-qualify anybody. Why? Because when I got put on somebody's list, I was 19 years old. I was single. I was still living with my mom. I was totally out of the market. But somebody, thank goodness, put me on their list. So I don't want you to pre-qualify anybody, okay? Now, if you're going to open up a restaurant, you would talk to everybody you know about coming down to see that restaurant, right? You, If someone gave you the keys to a restaurant, you would call everybody. You would say, hey, come down and see my restaurant. You would be so excited. You would want them to know that you just had your own restaurant. Same thing in our business. We just want to make sure everybody you know has at least seen the presentation. We're not, we just, we know some people are going to say yes, some people are going to say no, some people are going to give us referrals. That's not what we're worried about. We're worried about getting you trained and building your referral base so we have to get out and just make sure everybody you know has at least seen the presentation. Okay? So, um, here's a memory jogger as we go through to create your list. We'll use this here in just a second so you can create your list. This is a little memory jogger. This is the right market which I'm going to go over with you in just a second as we create your list and we uh, start going through on what to say to set some appointments. So we'll go through that in just a second. This is what to say. So I'm going to teach you what to say uh, as we call and start setting some appointments with some of these people, okay? Um, and then the last thing uh, before we create your list is we have to get your fingerprints done. Now, Anytime you get a license through the state of Nevada, you get your fingerprints done, you do what's called an FBI background check, and the company they use is what's called L1 Identity Solutions. And so you're going to call L1 Identity at this number, 
And when you call them, they're going to have you schedule at $55. Now, I need you to keep your receipt because Primerica is going to reimburse you that money, okay? Now, it takes us 30 business days to get you licensed from the day you get your fingerprints done. So the faster we can get your fingerprints done, the faster we can get you paid, okay? So we need to get this done like today if possible, worst case scenario tomorrow. So I need you to call this number and schedule it. Worst case scenario for tomorrow, get your fingerprints done as soon as possible, okay? All right, so the next thing we wanna do is create their list. Now, as we start creating somebody's list, um, I, I wanna go through exactly what you say. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, okay, so as we create your list, what I want you to do is basically get out your cell phone and I want you to start at A and go to Z. I want you to put everybody down on the list regardless of whether they live here, don't live here, as long as they're 18 years of age or older. Okay, I want them on the list. We're gonna go through and you and I are gonna go qualify the list and figure out who we wanna go see, who we don't wanna go see, who's in another city and so forth, okay? So as you're filling out uh, your list, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put their name down on the list and when you put their name, you're gonna put their telephone number and their occupation. Now when you put their occupation, let's say they're a valet person, right? So if he's a valet guy, where does he valet? Does he valet at the Aria or at Caesars or whatever it may be? If he's a server, what restaurant does he serve at? Uh, so not only put their occupation, but what location uh, as well. And then comments, put how you know him, whether it's a brother, sister, friend, aunt, uncle, cousin, parents, however you know that person, okay? And then you're gonna qualify them over here. So as you qualify them, you're gonna put how old they are. So if the guy's 25, you just write 25. You're gonna put right here, you'll put a check mark if they're married. If not, you leave it blank. How many kids they have. So if they have two kids, you'll put a two. If they have no kids, you'll leave it blank. If they own a home, you'll put a check mark. If they don't, you leave it blank. This is if they make $30,000 a year combined household income. So if they make 30,000 a year combined household income, you'll put a check mark. If not, then you won't. And then if this is if they've lived in Las Vegas for two years or longer, and then this is how well you know them on a scale of one to 10. A 10 is gonna be you know them really, really well. A one is somebody you met yesterday. If you forget what these are, there's a key up here that tells you exactly what it is, okay? So what I want you to do is get your phone out, start at A, go to Z, and start and start filling these out, okay? Is that good? Um, yeah. Maybe a little bit that way. Right there. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Now, once I've got their list filled out, I'm gonna explain to them exactly what is the right market. I'm gonna say, okay, so there's two kinds of people we're gonna go see. The first kind of uh, person we're gonna go see is what we call qualified. Now this person is somebody who's uh, married, got kids, own a home. The next kind of person is gonna be somebody who's not qualified, so they're probably not married, don't have kids, don't own a home, maybe they're single. Now, the people that are not qualified, we, dang it. Um, in fact, hold on, I'm trying to think real quick. Okay. Do I want to pull this back for a second? Glad I did that. We check and see if that's good up there. Is it good? Can you see? Yeah, you're good. Okay. So, once you have somebody's list filled out, what you want to do is you want to go through it with them. Okay. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna figure out who's married, who has kids, who owns a home, and how they know this person. So I'm gonna go through each person. I'm gonna say, okay, how do you know this person? And I'm gonna, the comments, and maybe I'll take some notes next to the name. On the people that are four or five pointers or six pointers, I'm gonna put a circle around the number, okay? So when I put a circle around that number, they don't know right then that it's a qualified person and we're gonna set a kitchen table. But I know that those are the people that we're gonna set kitchen tables with. So there's 10 spots on this list right here. Let's say eight of them have circles around the list. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell them, okay, all the people with circles, 
uh, next or around the number, I want you to number them. So if there's eight of them, I say I want you to number them. Eight being the least comfortable to call, one being the most comfortable to call, no problem, they're gonna give you an appointment. So then they're gonna go through and they're gonna number them one to eight or one to however many circles there are. And when they do number those, that's how I want them to call. So we're gonna start with the number one, we're gonna move to the number two, move to the number three, and so forth. That's the order in which we're gonna set the appointments, okay? Good? Yep. Okay, so once our list is filled out, we have it totally qualified, now I need to teach them what the right market is and what to say to set an appointment and set a few appointments. So, I'm gonna sit down and say, okay, let me explain to you what the right market is, okay? Because there's a right market or a qualified market and an unqualified market. So, the right market is age 25 to 50, they're married, they have kids, they own a home, and they have full-time jobs making $30,000 a year, and they've been in Las Vegas for two years or longer, okay? Now, if you notice, there's six of these points. So if they have all six of them, we call it a six-pointer. If they're missing one, then we would call it a five-pointer. Missing two, we call it a four-pointer. So the people we wanna go see in the evening uh, on what we call kitchen table appointments are people that are married, still have kids at home, they own a home, they have jobs, and they're in the right age group, right? So those are the kind of people we wanna go see in the evening. If they're not married, don't have kids, don't own a home, we just wanna go see those people during the day, or we wanna bring them down to the overview uh, at our office, okay? So that's what we're gonna do with those people. Now, so, we already have these uh, people qualified, right? We have their list qualified. And so now what I'm gonna do is role play with them on what to say to set an appointment. I'm gonna say, okay, there's a couple options on when you set an appointment with uh, the people on your list. Option one is gonna be we can go see them now or it's somebody you know really, really good. You go to their house quite a bit, right? So you're gonna call that person up. So let's say you're calling John. You're gonna call him up and say, hey John, this is Jeff, how you doing? And you're gonna chit chat for a minute, right? And you're gonna say, hey, are you gonna be home Tuesday night? And he says, yeah, why? I say, great, I have something I wanna show you, somebody I want you to meet, I'm gonna pop by Tuesday night. You think six or eight o'clock would be better? And he just tells you, probably six o'clock. Okay, great. So if he says, uh, not that night, you'll just set it at a different time. If he says, what is it about? You just say, I'm just starting the second career. I have to get a license through the state of Nevada. I have to go through some training before I can go to school. So would you and your wife be willing to help me out sit through a, free, uh, with a, sit through a presentation with a friend of mine who's training me? And he's gonna say, sure. You say, great, I'm available this day or this day. And you always give him a choice, whether it's Monday or Tuesday or Tuesday and Wednesday. You say, which day would be better? And then you're gonna set it, okay? So it's very important you set that at that time, all right? Then once you get the appointment set, you just say, hey, do me a favor. Let your wife know, and then also put it on your calendar so you don't forget, and I'll see you whatever night at whatever time that you set it for, okay? So that's one option. Option number two is this is somebody, maybe you don't go to their house a lot, uh, but you know them pretty good, or, or really I think this works for anybody, okay? But you're gonna call them, say, hey John, how you doing, this is Jeff, uh, and you're gonna chit chat for a minute. You're gonna say, hey, the reason I was calling is I just got started with a second career, and I have to get a license through the state. I have to go through some training before I can go to school. Would you and your wife be willing to sit down and sit through a presentation with a friend of mine who's training me? And they're either gonna say yes, or what is it? If they say yes, say great, I'm available Monday or would Tuesday be better? And they, they'll pick a day, right? You say great, what time is six or eight o'clock better? And so let's say they say eight o'clock. You say, great, do me a favor, let your wife know, put it on your calendar so you don't forget, okay? I'll see you Monday night at six o'clock. Now, if they say, what is it about? You just say, I'm just working with a financial services company. It's very exciting. I just need a favor. It's just part of my training before I go to school. What day would be better, Monday or Tuesday, all right? And you set the appointment. Now, the next option you have is um, option three. And so when we, option three is just, you'll call them up and you'll say, Hey John, this is Jeff, how you doing? Good. Hey, would you be willing to help me out? You say, yeah. I say, the reason why is I just got started with a new company and I'm very excited about it. I just wanna come show you what I'm doing. When, when's the time I can pop by and show you and your wife? I got this day or this day be better. And you set the appointment. If he says, what's it about? You say, I'm just working with a financial services company. It's very exciting. I just need a favor. It's just part of my training before I go to school. What day be better? I have Monday or Tuesday. 
Now, if he says, well, I don't think I'd be interested, you just say, look, John, if you're not interested and it's not for you, would you feel comfortable telling me no? And what's he going to say? Yeah. Say, great, then what day would be better, on Monday or Tuesday? He set it up, and then he said, do me a favor, let your spouse know, put it on your calendar so you don't forget, I'll see you this day at this time, okay? And then you set it up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to role play over and over with the new recruit. So I'm going to role play, I'm going to ask him, okay, which one makes you feel more comfortable? So option one, option two, or option three? I'm going to role play over and over and over and over. Now after I role play it a few times, I'm going to say, okay, great, let's start at number one. And we call number one, set an appointment, move to number two, set another appointment until we call at least we set three to five appointments or call all the five pointers on their list.